top five exercise marking habits that every great ballet teacher has. Let's find out what they are, hey? Point number one, top skill is every great ballet teacher always marks the first eight counts, at least in tempo, in the meter, and in the accent that they want. That's right. Let's talk about what that is for just a second. What's the tempo? The tempo is how fast or how slow. Those first eight counts need to clearly communicate that. Meter. Those first eight counts need to clearly communicate what is the meter. But every great ballet teacher can demonstrate that. The duple meter or the triple meter. Is it a polonaise? Is it a mazurka? Is it a minuet? Is it a tango? That's all demonstrated in those first eight counts. And of course, every great ballet teacher always demonstrates any interesting accents. They draw attention to that. Accents like, and closed, and closed. Yeah, you can hear it right away. You know what accent I want. That's what every great ballet teacher does. When they're marking, the first eight counts. Do you know why it needs to be the first eight and not the last eight? Because that's giving your pianist the information to start looking for their music while you teach the rest of the exercise. They need time. They've got to look through all their music and pick the perfect piece of music for you. Every great ballet teacher always marks in the center of the room. Now, what I mean by this is they mark and teach in a location where everyone in the studio can see them. That means all the students, and that means your musician. So a really great ballet teacher will always mark in a location where I, as a pianist, can see their feet. You see, if they're teaching right behind the piano, I actually can't see their feet. I have no idea what accent they want as far as looking at them. So when teaching, always mark at a location where the whole studio can see your accents. Remember, those first eight counts are so valuable, but only if everyone can see and hear you, especially with masks. These days with masks, it's such a pain. So please mark at a location that is brilliantly central and visible by everyone. Top skill number three of every great ballet teacher, and that is they know how to project their voice. Now, projecting your voice, this is not yelling, but it is speaking so clearly and enunciating well to someone who is standing on the other side of the studio. You're not speaking to the closest dancer, you're speaking to the farthest dancer. And if you're insecure, that's even more reason to enunciate and to project your voice because naturally your insecurities are going to cause you to turtle. Naturally, your insecurities are gonna cause you to be quiet and, and not loud because you're not trusting yourself. You must project your voice, so important. That's how you manage the room. That's how you establish your presence as a teacher, not just another person in the room right? Every great ballet teacher has this skill as well. They have a variety of meter in their onset classes. So when they're teaching an onset class that is not syllabus, they are strategically considering how many duple meters have I used? How many triple meters have I used? I, 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 I'm going to change this up. I don't want to use another triple meter. The last four exercises have all been threes. I'm going to change it up. They're very aware of keeping variety in the class. This is, for, this is for training musicality for your dancers. This is for challenging yourself in your own music counting. It's so valuable and it's so important and I see it exhibited in great ballet teachers. And for number five, every great ballet teacher knows how to mark very clearly without dancing it full out. That's right, some of the best ballet teachers I've ever accompanied for are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Well, let me tell you, they are not dancing at full out. Definitely not. Their port-a-bras fall out, but the rest of their body is marking it. 
If you believe that you need to actually dance it full out in order to communicate your exercise, that is a limiting belief. It's not true. The way you avoid that is you need to know your exercises. When you're creating your exercise, create it with music playing. So you're hearing the same music with that exercise while you create it. It's gonna give you a really good grounding of the timing, the accent, the purpose, the quality, all of those things that matter to that exercise, you're gonna get that when you create your exercise to a piece of music. So when you know your exercise so well from creating it with music, you're, you're not gonna feel like you have to mark it full out. You know it. You know the reason, the value, the meter, the accent, the quality, you've got it all, right? So recap. Let's review these five habits that every great ballet teacher has and uses. Number one, they always clearly mark the tempo, meter, and accent of those first eight counts. So powerful. Number two, they mark in a central location consistently so everyone can see and everyone can hear. Number three, connected to number two, projects their voice. There is never a person in the room who cannot hear them so important. It's not yelling, it's projecting. It's owning the room as an authority in the room. Number four, every great ballet teacher uses a variety of meter intentionally. It's not accidental. They're very aware of what they are picking, why, etc. This is so valuable. And number five, every great teacher knows how to mark clearly without dancing it full out. Again, so important. You want to be teaching 40 years from now. You want to be teaching 50 years from now. This is how you do it. You've got to tighten up your ability to mark without dancing in full out. Take care of your body. So do you have these five habits? That was totally you, right? I was just talking about you. There's nothing there, nothing new there to see. Or was there? Hmm. Are you ready to strengthen your abilities as a ballet teacher? If so, you must go to my website, www.thebarpianist.com. I have tons of free resources there that are there solely for your benefit, solely for you to enjoy, to learn from. There's an incredible um, collection of blog posts. I have a music training course called the Official Music Training Course for Ballet Teachers. That comes out about three or four times a year. Keep your eyes open for that if you're interested. Whatever the case may be, you've got to go and check out my website and hunt around on there and see what's gonna catch your eye and what's gonna give you more music skills. My mission, Laurel Leal, the bar pianist, my mission is to develop musical dancers. Kinda like you, right? By ensuring that every ballet teacher can confidently understand intentionally choose and capably use unset music for a ballet class. That's tough. Understanding the music, intentionally choosing music, and then using it well. I want that for every single ballet teacher in the world. Big dreams. Maybe they're a little too big, I don't know. But that's my plan, that's my goal. So without further ado, please do check out thebarpianist.com. It is a fabulous fount of information, of videos, of trainings, of free resources. There's some free music downloads, all kinds of magic in there. And again, if you're interested in learning actual music training, learning how to count the minuet, the mazurka, et cetera, please make sure you stay in touch because the official music training course for ballet teachers does open up every couple of months.